Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Oh, the Kranwagen. The long suffering Kranwagen. The tier 10 European line. Heavy, that is an auto reloader. Oh, this poor little chap. Now, when the Kranwagen first came out, it was awesome. I loved it. I mean, absolutely loved it. Played it so many times, even played it in tournaments. And then Wargaming, in its infinite wisdom, decided to nerf it. And bah, it was a nerf too far. Now look, the Kranwagen has always suffered from pretty horrendous DPM, to be fair. It's always suffered from lack of mobility, to be fair. And the only two things really going for it was its traverse and the fact that it had a stonking turret. Now, Wargaming then nerfed the traverse. Why? Well, they decided to. And it really sent the crown wagon spiraling downwards. But in the recent patch update, micro update, balance change, Wargaming gave it back a little bit of love. But has it made the tank better? Well, let's have a look at those changes. The direct reverse speed has been increased to 3.13 degrees. That's not bad. Doesn't really put it back to the place it used to be, but it's not bad. It's actually quite good. The armor thickness on the upper hull and the lower glacius plate, however, was decreased by 10 millimeters. That is bad because that's another nerf. I mean, it's nerfed again. And the reload times for the auto loading shells were also changed with an additional 1.4 seconds being added to the first shell, no changes to the second shell, and the final shell being reduced by 1.4 seconds. So, uh, that, I mean, that's a bit of a nerf, really. I mean, okay, the final shell has been reduced, but the first shell has now been increased, so the first shell now has about 12 seconds, which is pretty bad. I mean, let's have a look at the gun. So, the DPM has always been terrible in this thing. It's just over 2,000, and that's not great. The reload time between shots, that's between the interclip, by the way, is three seconds. Again, that's pretty low, especially when you're considering the likes of the FV4005 is knocking it out every two and a half seconds. Now, this is where the changes really take effect. So, the auto-loading times, the first shout takes... 12.5 seconds. I mean, that is a long time. The second shell will take 8.79 seconds. That's not too bad. And then the third shell takes 7.87 seconds, which is a vast improvement on what it used to be. Average penetration, well, it hasn't changed. It's still 271 on its APCR, 374 on its heat, and 66 on its HE. Average damage, 400 on its APCR, 340 on its heat, and 515 on its HE. Aiming time, again, hasn't changed, 3.2 seconds, and the dispersion at 100 meters is still pretty big at 0.32. The other thing that they did, as I said, they reduced the armor. So its hit points have sort of not changed. It's still 2,632. But... The armor on the front has come down on the hull. It's now 100. I mean, okay, it's sloped and it's a pike nose. But the thing is, uh, it's still pretty thin, even though it's sloped with a pike nose. Sides and rear of the hull, 80 and 50 respectively, paper thin. Frontal turret, 225. I mean, that's come down a little bit, but well, it has. The armor millimeters come down a little bit, but, you know, that's still pretty, pretty stonking. However, it's not as stonking as it used to be. And on the side and the rear, again, still pretty thin. View range, 282, not bad for a heavy tank. And you can see that the camo in concealment is not the best. So have the changes improved the tank? Now, before we get into those changes, I just want to show you what I'm running this thing with. Now, look, I could stick the improved ventilation on, which will increase my DPM, but it doesn't really reduce the shower load time significantly. Now, one of the other things that the Kranwagen has generally suffered with is that of penetration. So I run it with calibrated shells, which gives me an extra 13 um, millimeters of penetration, bringing me to that 271. I then have the defense system, 
the improved optics, enhanced gun laying device, improved assembly giving me those additional hit points. I then have the engine accelerator just to give me a bit more power down there, coupled with the vertical stabilizer and obviously yeah, toolbox and high end consumables. Provisions wise, well, I run the grilled salmon because that gives me better reload, as you can see, and a better aim time. Not brilliant, but okay. I then have the enhanced sandbag armor just to give me those additional hit points. And I also have crisp bread because again, that just helps with the reload times. I mean, I could run it with this, but then the reload times go up and I don't want to do that. Ammunition, well, I've got 27 APCR, 15 heat and 6 HE. Consumables, uh, I'm using the multi restoration pack. I'm using the super duper speed boost and I'm also using the additional repair kit. I could, in theory, put the reticle calibration in, but I don't think the cran wagon needs it. Well, I personally don't think. I mean, these are there for you to chop and change as you see fit. So let's jump into a game and see what you need to do to be effective in this tank. Now, the thing about the Kranwagen is that it is still painfully slow. I did a video the other day on the 215B, and a lot of people think that's the worst tier 10 heavy. Well, I don't. I actually think this is the worst tier 10 heavy because its DPM sucks and its mobility sucks. That's not to say it's not a bad tank, because if you play it correctly, you can still do well in this thing. Now, when I say play it correctly, there's a couple of things you need to understand. Firstly, you need to fully load that magazine, and then you need to play it as a one shot. You need to resist that temptation to empty the full magazine, unless you are guaranteed to empty every single round into the enemy tank. Why? Because to reload that magazine takes an eternity, as you will see in a moment. So I thought I would finish off, and I don't, and now I've got 12 and a half seconds of reload just for the first shell. Then another seven seconds, and then another eight seconds. I mean, it is huge to load that magazine back up. So you've got to be really careful there. Now, I'm not setting the world on fire in this game. I just wanted to show you, you know, some of the bits and bobs. However, whilst I don't set the world on fire, I actually get a third class. That goes to show how many people are struggling in this tank. If that game, which is really low, is getting me a third class, then there ain't many people playing the Kranwagen that well. Not really. And there is the thing. I mean, we only do 1600 damage. You know, we're, we're not great. If we look at the overall stats, I mean, the assistance damage Enemy spotted, none. Shots fired, eight. Damaged out, 1,600. Penetration, seven of seven. Um, and assistance damage, 214. I mean, it's clearly not being played that well by the majority of the player base. That, however, is not to say that the Kranwagen is truly terrible. I mean, I, I personally think this has fallen a long way from the perch it once had. It used to be a really, really lovely tier 10 heavy. And it's not really up there anymore. As I said, I, I personally think it's probably the worst tier 10 heavy in the game currently, because it's just painful to play sometimes. You can still do some good brawls in it. You can still have some good fun in it, but it really is a sort of unique style of gameplay. As I say, you've got to really treat it like it's a one-shot. And if you really do empty that clip, then you are incredibly vulnerable. I didn't fire the third shot there, but I'm still waiting an eternity for that magazine to load back up again. And therein lies your problem with the Clanwagen. Yes, if you can stick it in a haul down position and play it like a TD, I guess. And you're going to have some fun. Now here with the FV, I'm going to have some fun. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be able to take him out. We've already done 1,100 damage, which isn't too bad. And I then put the final shell into that yo. Big mistake, because now I've got to wait 
12 and a half seconds for the first shell, 7 and a half seconds for the second shell, and 8 seconds for the third shell. I mean, it is just a painfully long wait, and it keeps you out of the battle far too long, because you need to get your gun down, and this is where the Kranwagen is always suffered. Its DPM is just shockingly low. Now, if the DPM was higher, if the, in, if the magazine load times were higher, chances are it would be too dominant. Because it is a great tank. I mean, it's got great armor. But the low DPM coupled with its pretty poor mobility really doesn't help the cause of the clan, to be fair. I mean, okay, we do 2.8k here, and thankfully the Conway comes in to help us out. Because the Fosh could have killed me. Especially now they've shaved off 10 millimeters from the frontal of uh, from the front turret. However, you know you can still get some good times in this tank. It's not all doom and gloom. You've just got to play it differently. And as I say here, I mean, you know, just waiting for that reload time is just like I could go and make a cup of tea, come back, and I still won't have a full magazine. And that is the crippling side. So you really do need to work out how you're going to use the autoloader, okay? And whilst in this game I've shown you that I've been emptying the clip massively, the next game, the last replay, I'm going to show you how to play it more effectively, okay? And you've got to play it seriously as a one-shot and just fire that third round, okay? Load your magazine fully. Fire the third and final round only, and then you've got an eight second reload. You only then empty the clip when it is absolutely necessary. I mean, we do just shy of 3k there, we destroy three, we damage five, we've got two assists, we get a second class. Again, just goes to show how low that bar is because it is pretty low because people are struggling in that tank. This is the last replay and we're on mines, a map that the Kranwagen is actually suited for because it is a good haul down tank. I mean, the turret is still very, very strong. And what I'm going to do in this game is load the magazine fully, okay, and then just fire the, the final round, the third shell, so to speak, and then pull back, reload that third shell and just use it as a one shot. And that is the most effective way you can play a crown wagon in the early part of the game. Now, as I said in the previous replay, look, if you can empty the entire clip into a tank to get him out of the game, then you should be doing that. And that's the trick with the crown wagon. It's a very situational heavy tank now. Yes, you can on maps like mines frontline it. And as I said in the video I did yesterday on the IS-4, Frontlining doesn't mean to get up close and personal with the enemy. It means there's no friendly tanks between you and the enemy. So look, this Crown Wagen here is going to try and give this Progetto a bit of a hard time. But, you know, so I'm going to empty two shells and then pull back. I am not going to fire the third shell. Because that gives a 12 and a half second reload just for that shell. So that is the thing you've got to be mindful of. Now, the Crown Wagon has always been like that. It, it's not, you know, nothing in that respect has really changed. It's always had a pretty long first shell reload. Previously, it had a long first shell and a relatively long third shell. So what Wargaming have done is increased the first shell and decreased the third. So if you empty that magazine completely by firing all three, then you really are going to be in a world of pain because you're waiting 12 and a half seconds every single time and that's not good and as you can see here we you know we're only up to 1600 damage but we're not emptying the clip we're waiting until we get some decent shots on the enemy now i was going to empty the clip here because i thought i could possibly get his turret but i couldn't so now we're on our long reload okay simple as that and i can see that there's a tank to the right of us and it's a 60 tp so what I'm going to do, I'm going to fully load up the magazine and I'm going to rush down as much as you can rush in a Kranwagen towards the 60TP. And 
that's what we're looking at. We're looking at getting down to the CTTP and giving them a hard time. We're going to bounce, unfortunately, the first shot. Uh, there you go. Tried to track him, but didn't work. And now we get to finish him off with a little bit of help from somebody else. That gives two tanks left. We're now at 2,500. Hopefully, I know where the E4 is because he's smacked me twice already. And I'm thinking he hasn't moved from his position. So I'm going to slowly, slowly, because that's all you can do in a crown wagon, slowly, slowly, work my way around to his area. Now, look, when I cross here, I'm going to get spotted. I know that. So I want to hide a little bit. Oh, the ho -Ri wants to get involved. Fair enough, ho -Ri. And I'm still waiting for the E4 to pop up. There he is. Now we can empty our full clip into him. There's number one, there's number two. Third time's a charm, we get the 500. Just shy of 4K damage. We kill one and we have a relatively nice game in the Kranwagen. And that's the thing about the Kranwagen. That's what you should be looking to do. That's how you should be looking to play it. Again, we get a second class, so clearly people are playing it a lot better recently. We blocked 1,184. 1, we dished out just shy of 4K. And we had a relatively good game. In fact, we become top damage. So the advice is to play the crown wagon effectively, you really need to be start to sh use it purely as a one shot. You need to fully load that magazine. You need to be in a nice haul down position and you just need to fire that final round. That will give you 400 every seven point something seconds, which is much better than firing the entire clip because then it's just gonna be an eternity and you don't want that. And that's the thing about the Kranwagen. I'm still debating whether or not I like the tank. I mean, like I said, I used to love this tank. I used to think it was spectacular. But the nerfs that Wargaming gave it really did punish this tank unduly. Because it, it lost some of its charm. As I said, it's always been pretty terrible DPM. And it's always been pretty terrible mobility. But there's just something about the Kranwagen now that just makes it a very difficult tank to get to grips with. Yes, if you don't empty the magazine, then it's not as tricky. And if you fire it as a one shot, it's much easier to get on with. But it's still a notoriously difficult tank, unlike when it first came out. So it's a toss up between the 215B and the Kranwagen for me on which is the worst tier 10 heavy. And for me, this one just pushes it out a bit more because it's not really a front line tank, unless you've got, like in mines, where you've got good haul down positions. If you've got a particularly flat map or a map whereby, you know, you, know, you, you can't really have those places of safety just to stick its turret, then the chances are you are gonna struggle in this tank. The other problem with it is, because it's still got mobility issues and it's got terrible DPM, if you generally get rushed, which has always been the case with the club, then again, you're going to struggle. Anyway, I've been food it. That's been my take on the Kranwagen. Yes, it's got a bit of a buff, but it's also had a bit more nerfed out of it. The turret reverse buff was nice. However, the armor and the reload nerf buff buff nerf, whatever you want to call it, still makes the tank a really difficult tank to play and a tricky, tricky tank. Anyway, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Comments below. That's what they're there for. And until the next time, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about, isn't it? Trying to have fun and being happy.